In this video, we will cover the process of converting a project from Turbo PMAC to Power PMAC. We will divide this video into five sections followed by a conclusion. Let's take a look at hardware upgrade paths, development software, operator interface software, programming, and finally, firmware features. Turbo and Power PMAC both have several form factors to choose from. Let's take a look at a few possible upgrade paths based on form factor. The GeoBrick Drive and GeoBrick LV are replaced with the PowerBrick AC arm and the PowerBrick LV arm, respectively. The Brick Controller is replaced with the CK3M product line, which is compact and DIN rail mountable. PMAC ISA and PCI form factors are also replaced with the CK3M product line. All cards from the modular UMAC line can still be used with Power PMAC. The CPU is replaced with the UMAC 1020 CPU or UMAC 1040 CPU. The Access Interface card can be upgraded to an accessory 2043. In some cases, the CK3M product line can be used instead. The Turbo Clipper is replaced with the Power Clipper 1020, which is coming in 2022. Let's take a look at development software. In Turbo PMAC, PEWIN32 was used for commissioning your system. Similarly, the Power PMAC IDE is used to commission your system in Power PMAC. Both software packages have a similar layout and are composed of similar tools. The terminal still allows commands and settings to be entered manually. Now it has IntelliSense to assist in finding PMAC structure element names. The editor window still allows you to edit code meant to be downloaded to PMAC. The status window now has multiple tabs for motor, coordinate, global, and macro status elements, as well as color coding. Good status bit values are shown in green, errors are shown in red. The position window can now show position in engineering units, such as millimeters or degrees. Click on the gear icon to change settings. The watch window is now much easier to use. Double click an empty row or current variable name to edit. Rows can also be changed to a button that sends a command when pressed. The task manager now has multiple tabs to view CPU information, CPU usage, and what tasks are currently running. Some tabs bring in functionality previously in other tools, such as starting and stopping programs. The Jog ribbon now has a Jog Axis feature. This could, for example, move only the x-axis on a system with kinematics. The Tuning tool now shows motor status as well as better stat calculations and allows a continuous live tune. There are also sliders for easier filter setup and a side-by-side -side gantry tune. The plotting tool is now considerably easier to use. Variables can be added to data to sample from a mix of sources, including motor positions, a tree of PMAC variables, and manual entry. In PWIN32, different files in the editor window were typically downloaded one at a time. In the Power PMAC IDE, setup for your entire system is contained within a project which is all downloaded at once. On the first download of a project, the build and download all programs option must be used. In PEWIN32, the entire configuration was typically found in a single file. In the Power PMAC IDE, the project is organized so that various files such as PLCs and motion programs reside under corresponding folders. We will be creating a new file for each program. A new project can be created from File, New Project, or the Start page. You will be given the option to name it and choose a location. Global settings, including clock settings, can be found in the System tool opened in the CPU folder. The motor setup utility is greatly enhanced. Most settings can be automatically imported after selecting an amplifier, motor, and encoder. Hardware specifications can be saved in a database or entered manually. The IDE will step PMAC through test and set followed by basic tuning automatically. This may take a couple minutes, so let's watch a sped up version.
It is also possible to configure the system and motors using the traditional files method. In this case, the system setup config file should be set to not download. Power PMAC is easier to use with operator interface software. Power PMAC NC16 allows control of PMAC through an HMI with G-code. It allows operator login, customization for machine type, mid-program start, and much more. The Power PMAC PDK allows creation of custom operator interface software to communicate with Power PMAC. It uses SSH for communication and was developed with the latest .NET drivers. Next, we'll take a look at some of the programming differences between Turbo and Power PMAC. In Turbo PMAC, numbered P variables were used as global variables. If a name was desired to make programs more readable, it was added with a pound define. While the same P variables and pound defines will work in Power PMAC, it is preferable to declare global variables. These are assigned to P variables starting at P8192. This leaves P0 to P8191 for legacy use. In Turbo PMAC, numbered M variables were used for pointers to hardware locations. If a name was desired to make programs more readable, it was added with a pound define. In Power PMAC, there will usually be a name structure, so there is no need to point to a numerical address. While the same M variables and pound defines will work in Power PMAC, it is preferable to declare global pointers. These are assigned to M variables starting at M8192. This leaves M0 to M8191 for legacy use. In Turbo PMAC, numbered I variables were used for system settings. If a name was desired to make programs more readable, it was added with the pound define. In Power PMAC, these variables are ready to use structure elements built into the firmware. This makes it much easier to address different numbered system, gate, and motor elements. For a detailed list of which I variables correspond to which Power PMAC structures, see the Power PMAC Turbo I Variable Equivalence section of the most recent Power PMAC software reference manual. Note that there is not always a one-to-one -one equivalent between turbo and power setup variables. Motor setup I variables for the first 32 motors are still available in Power PMAC where possible. In turbo PMAC, all PLCs were numbered. In Power PMAC, name PLCs are preferable. Change all PLC numbers to names. This includes calls to enable and disable PLCs. Numbered PLCs are still allowed, but named and numbered PLCs should not be mixed in the same project. Also, remove the word clear on the open PLC name line. Turbo PMAC allowed semicolon, double backslash, and multi-line comments. Power PMAC allows double backslash and multi-line comments. Replace semicolon comments with double backslash comments. Turbo PMAC allowed long and short command quotes. In most cases, command quotes can be replaced with in-program commands when migrating to Power PMAC. Where this is not possible, only short command quotes can be used. Most operators used in Turbo PMAC function the same in Power PMAC. The logical AND and logical OR operators are now symbols instead of words. Checking if two values are equal now uses a double equal sign less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, operators can still be used the same as in Turbo, or they can be written in a more standard form. Turbo PMAC had indif and inwell commands. For Power PMAC, replace these with curly brackets. In Turbo PMAC, decrementing I variables were used to create timers. In Power PMAC, subprogram calls to the built-in timer functions should be used instead. In Turbo PMAC, all PLCs were enabled on PowerUp. Usually, PLC1 would disable other PLCs not yet needed. In Power PMAC, PLCs must be enabled either in ppstartup.txt or from other PLCs to run on PowerUp. i5 no longer controls PLC behavior. In Power PMAC motion programs, a colon is added after the line number before the rest of the line. In Turbo PMAC, P0 
PVT moves were never segmented, and TM or TA was used for move time depending on I-42. In Power PMAC, PVT moves can be segmented, and the move time comes after PVT. In Turbo PMAC, Spline 1 was used for uniform splines, and Spline 2 was used for non-uniform splines where the move time can be changed with TM or TA depending on I-42. In Power PMAC, there is only one spline command, and it is followed by a move time, which can be changed as often as spline is issued. For fine control of acceleration, movement, and deceleration segments, up to three spline commands can be placed on one line. For the non-uniform spline times to work in the same way as in Turbo PMAC, chord X dot spline time rotate must be set to one. In Turbo PMAC kinematics, P variables were used to represent motor positions, and Q variables were used to represent axis positions. In Power PMAC kinematics, KinPaws axis and KinPaws motor variables, which do not need to be declared, are used instead. In Turbo PMAC, ISX50 was used to enable kinematics. In Power PMAC, there is no need to enable kinematics. In Turbo PMAC, Forward kinematics used for motion could not be used for reporting axis positions, and custom code was required to run the forward kinematics equations elsewhere. In Power PMAC, a set of read commands provide this capability, making it easy to implement an axis position reporting PLC. Compiled PLCCs from Turbo PMAC were written in the PMAC script language, just like script PLCs. In Power PMAC, these are replaced with BGC PLCs and an RTIC PLC written in the C programming language. To enable BGC PLC 0, we will use the command enable BGC PLC 0. In Turbo PMAC, user algorithms were written in assembly language, which is quite difficult to work with, and enabled as a motor's phase or servo algorithm if IXX59 is a value other than zero. In Power PMAC, user algorithms are written in C, which is much easier to work with. Setup required to replace the default servo routine is handled by the IDE. Just right-click the real-time routines folder and add user servo to start the process. When you are done, your function will be added to usercode.c and ready for contents. Power PMAC has a number of new firmware features to take advantage of. Let's look at a few. Multiple motors can be addressed at once with either online or in-program commands. CPX and CX can be used to run a single line as a motion program or PLC. Compensation tables are now configured with easier to use structure elements. Cross-couple gantry allows coupling between motors in the servo algorithm itself. This is an improvement from assigning both motors to the same axis, which was the main gantry option in Turbo. The EtherCAT option is available on all Power PMAC form factors with an IDE setup tool to control distributed motion systems with an easy setup. Ethernet IP now has an easy to use setup tool and variable monitoring. Modbus is now supported by all Power PMAC CPUs with commands and structure elements. The Power PMAC CPU has significantly more memory, eliminating the need for the rotary buffer, a much faster CPU, gigabit ethernet, and more modern technology. With a little bit of work, Turbo PMAC applications can be fully migrated to Power PMAC. A hardware upgrade path must be chosen. New development software is familiar but easier to use. The latest NC software and PDK library allow an easier operator interface transition. Some programming considerations must be made. Additional firmware and software features will increase performance and ease of use. Thank you for your attention. We hope that this video presentation was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to your local Omron representative.